The Sea Hound. On distant seas, in far off skies, in jungle depths of other lands, you'll find adventure with Captain Silver and the Sea Hound. Between the serpent's mouth on the coast, where it empties into the ocean, and its source in the lush jungles of Venezuela, the Orinoco River passes through only one city of importance, Ciudad Bolivar, the city of Bolivar. The Orinoco is navigable, and so many seamen walk the streets of Bolivar, among them Captain Silver, Tex, and Kai, wending their way to the heart of town. Where are we heading for, Captain? The Government Hall of Progress, Tex. There's an exhibit I want to see. Say, I heard they got a scale model of the railroad government's building that into, into the interior. Yes, including little figures of the American engineers heading up the job. A uh, very important undertaking. If wealth of the interior can be brought out by time and machinery brought in, much improvement will be made. I reckon everybody in town's at this here exhibit. Yes, here we are, Captain. The sign in Spanish say, Railroad Exhibiting Great Hall. (laughs) (laughs) Captain Silver, notice Great Hall, very empty of people. Nothing but a few folks way over yonder near that uh, train exhibit. I can't understand it. They've been building for six months now. Those progress reports on the bulletin board there should attract more people. Yeah, perhaps citizens of Bolivar are not interested in trying to enter you. No, I was here at the opening celebration. Uh, much excitement? Why, the whole town turned out. Hey, let's have a look. Ah, very real, Captain Silver. Exact model of train, exact model of jungle. Yes. Uh, you notice anything odd about the way the road is being laid so far? Can't say as I do, Captain. Except that for six months, they sure ain't traveled far. Senor? Uh, you addressing me? See, si, senor. I hear you call this a road into the interior. Well, that's what it is. You are wrong. This is a road to eternity. See, si, a road to eternity. Will I be? Did you hear that, Captain? Yes. So that's how the people of Bolivar feel. That's why Capitan they... Capitan Silver! Oh, I have been looking all over for you. Carlo, Carlo Luis. I have been searching the whole of Bolivar as soon as I heard the sea hound was in port. But what is it? Please, I cannot talk here. My office is right upstairs. Come with me. I must talk with you. When did you first become suspicious, Carlo? Mm, It is hard to say. As you know, there are powerful groups here who do not want this railroad. They wish to keep the interior as private territory for themselves, eh? See, si. And of course, every time there is a delay, an accident, or trouble on the road, they try to use it to have the whole thing stopped. Uh, well, tell me, Carlo, do the engineers follow the blueprints of the road as laid out by the government? No. Always they say our blueprints are impossible. I see. Well, it sounds like someone's working against you, Carlo. But... Well, after all, how can we help you if your own men couldn't locate anything? Captain Silver, please to listen to me. The engineers on this road are Americanos. They represent a big concern in your country. Always, Americanos have helped us much, but... uh, You suspect the Americans. I am ashamed I have to say this. But how can I question their good faith, Captain Silver? It might endanger relations. You want us to look into it? Oh, si, por favor. Tex? Kai? Sure enough, Captain. Very willing to be road laborer, Captain Silver. Why, that's an excellent idea, Kai. Carlo, that's what we'll do. The three of us will hire on as laborers. That'll give us an inside view of what's what. Bueno. But one thing, Capitan. What's that? Do not say you know me. It will be better. Oh, yes, you're right. Well, we'll take the sea hound as far up as we can go. The rest of the way we'll go by hand, car, on the track already laid. If we're going, let's go, Captain. Oh, gracias, Capitan Silva. You have brought me the first peace of mind I have known in many months. Ah, uh, glad to be of help. But what's this? Small statue, tacked to door. Madre mia. 
It is. Carlo, what is this little figure with the tiny dagger in his hand? It is the God of Vengeance. <laughs> Kai, you want me to relieve you on the pumping detail? No, thank you, Captain. Always since childhood, I look forward to pumping Hanka. Well, the pleasure's all yours, Kai. Uh, say, Captain, how about another look at old Pierce Eyes? You mean the God of Vengeance we took off Carlo's door? Yep. You're certainly most curious about him, Tex. Yeah, here he is. Mm. <whistles> mean looking, cuss, ain't he? With that little dagger in his paw? That little dagger, Tex, is supposed to have killed many a man. You mean there's somebody alive who looks like this? No. This is a copy of a much larger figure. According to the legend, the god of vengeance stands at the entrance of a native temple in this region. And all who enter, and are not supposed to, are drawn irresistibly to his dagger and are impaled on it. Well, now, how can a statue put a dagger through somebody? Sounds like a lot of foolishness to me. Well, I'm not worried about any god of vengeance, Tex. What I'm concerned about is this little figure in your hand. You ain't falling for bad luck, omens, Captain. No, but whoever stuck it to Carlo's door must know we're being sent by Carlo. Hey, that is bad. Tex, Captain Silver, hold on. Something's wrong with the track. But do not enjoy hand cars, swimming companions. Well, head for the nearest bank. We can't tell about alligators in this river. Oh, man, it sure was a close shave. Well, I guess we'll have to walk the rest of the way. Kai. <laughs> yes? One minute we were sailing along, and the next we were sailing through the air. Yeah, perhaps God of vengeance, Captain. Look overhead at castle we fell off. The tracks, they spread out. Yes, did not notice tracks ahead. Say, I had the God of Vengeance in my hand when we went over. Now he's gone. Perhaps very fortunate. Perhaps our luck improved. Yes, because the legend holds that once the God of Vengeance has placed a curse on you, it'll cling to you forever. <laughs> Near shack ahead. None too soon either. Looks like an electric storm is fixing to blow. Yep. Reckon they blow up some mighty pretty storms in these parts. Uh, better to go inside, Engineer Shack. Would welcome chair to sit down in. Uh. Are you the three men supposed to bring the hand car in? Yes, this is Tex and Kai, and I'm Silver. My name's Dargan, engineer in charge. What kept you so long? Better ask your track crew that. Now, don't tell me how to run my own road. My man hired you on as laborers. I expect you to be punctual. Well, what Tex meant, Mr. Dargan, is that we had an accident. The tracks were spread out. Yeah, the jungle heat will do that. Everything happens in this rotten climate. What do you know about building a railroad? Oh, some. We've worked around in various places. Well, forget anything you knew. You'll have to learn it all over again here. Want to wash up? You could stand some sleep and grub. You'll bunk in the barracks with the other men. Silver, you know how to read a map? I guess so. Okay, look here. Now, this blue line marks the track we've laid so far, up to this point. Yeah. A mile ahead of us is this. Ah, a mountain surrounded by bad swamplands, eh? In the morning, we're going to lay track around that mountain. Uh Uh-huh. Uh, by the way... What is it? Uh, just asking, but... Well, I'm sure you've tested the rock formation inside that mountain. What do you mean? Well, you could save about five miles if the track were laid through the mountain, tunneled. Well, now, figuring track, huh? Well, that's my job, Silver. I'm laying track around the base. <laughs> A, a hole big enough to bury an elephant in, Captain. Well, what do you say, Kai? Deep enough? Uh, Captain Silver. Yes, Kai? Please to descend into hole with me. A very interesting revelation. Stay up here, Tex. Keep a lookout. Yep. 
Uh, now. Not this cross section of surface revealed in this hole, Captain. Oh. A layer of sand and shale, the first three feet or so. Yes. And quite loose. Notice the next layer down, please. Gravel and then solid rock. My guy. Only one conclusion, Captain. Engineer Duggan does not know his work, or he is the man we are looking for. Why, this is a perfect mountain for tunneling. He could have gone right through here and set up his... Captain Schubert! A slide! Get in our way! Well, quick, Tex! Jump down in here with us! We've got one chance of getting out alive! Okay, Captain! Come on, come on. You're having all day long. Men under this rubble may still may still be alive. All right, hurry it up. Hold it. Now, give me a hand, one of you men. Now, easy does it. Come on, up with him. Uh, there you go. Thanks, Dargan. I'll be all right. Get Tex and Kai. Let me give you a hand. You lie there till you get your wind back. Here come your friends. Uh, oh, it's very close, Captain. Except for Mr. Duggan, we might be asleep forever in hole we ourselves dug. Yeah. Lucky you was around, Mr. Dargan. And now, Silver, after you almost did away with yourself and your friends, how come you were up here on this mountain and not down below like I ordered? Well, I was curious about the mountain. You were curious, huh? Well, I wouldn't be if I were you. <laughs> Right down, Tex. Oh, it's two in the morning. I've already wakened Kai. Be with you in a jiffy. Where are we headed? The Dargan's work shack. Lion's den, eh? No, he sleeps in his own hut, other side of camp. Gonna search for a radio or something? Come on, hurry up, Tex. We're going to check the government specifications for this railroad. The blueprints are in his work shack. If the government specifications direct him to tunnel through the mountain, we'll be on the way to a solution. Small boy, very embarrassing. There you are. Okay, Tex. Haul away, Captain. Now we'll shut this window. Want a flashlight, Captain? No, not yet. This moonlight will help. Captain, this map not same as shown to you by Dagan before. No, he had a duplicate. This one carries the seal of the government surveyor's office. And red line passes through mountain. Uh-huh. He's relying on his friends to kill the entire project. Must be pretty penny for Mr. Dagan, indeed. And I'll bet a pretty penny his own firm doesn't know what he's doing. Well, I mean, we got him dead to rights now, Captain. That mountain... No, it won't hold up, Tex. He could argue his way out. We've got to find how he gets his orders and how he passes back news of delays and other... Things. What's up? Quick, dash a flashlight. Each one of us behind some piece of furniture. Him. Yes, Dargan, this hour of night. You was 
was close to his desk when he opened that drawer, Captain. What in tarnation was that he took out? A native costume. You mean a grass covering and them, them bead sashes they wear? Yes. I'm as puzzled as you are. Captain, observe in moonlight, Mr. Dargan heading away from camp. So, he's disappeared into the jungle with a native costume. Well, we're going after him. This may be what we're waiting for. He's disappeared into the jungle like a snake. Possible dog and hurt us, Captain, and perhaps hiding in tea this very minute. No, we were too careful for that guy. I smell a trap, Captain. Well, there are three of us to one of him. We'll keep moving in the direction Dargan was heading. There's a chance we'll pick up his trail again. Captain Silver, straight ahead. What? A, a temple? Yes, but notice, please, in doorway of temple revealed by moonlight. Well, I'll be a ring-tailed baboon. Captain Silver, it's a man, maybe seven feet tall, and a dagger in his hand. No, Tex, that's not a man. It's the god of vengeance, standing in the doorway of his own temple. We've been lying here in the grass for close to an hour now, Captain. Just watching that statue with the dagger. You know, I'd be lying to you if I said I didn't have the willies. Yes, he's an awesome sight, isn't he? With just room enough in the doorway for a man to squeeze by him and into the temple. Most unusual figure, Captain. Notice how dagger is held at level of man's heart. Why don't we crawl up close and get a good gander at him, Captain? Because I have a hunch our friend Dargan's in that temple. And I have enough experience with native legends to believe that at least some of what they say is true. You mean that their iron statue can really run a man through if he don't belong in the temple? Captain, you see what I see? A native coming out right past that dagger. It's Dargan in native dress. But how How can you fool a statue just by wearing a gray skirt? Look, now he go back into jungle. I'm going after him. We can't let him get away. It's no good to us out here, Tex. Let him go. Well, then, why did we trail him out here? He led us to the temple. Now we know there's something inside it of extreme importance to Dargan's scheme. We're going to challenge the god of vengeance to let us through. I have most uncomfortable feeling in vicinity of knees, Captain Silver. All right, now. Dargan's vanished back into the jungle. We can move up closer. up close, don't he? Like he's got his eye on you. Perhaps God of Vengeance operates dagger on spring, Captain. Necessary to push some button, maybe. Tex, your flashlight. Here you be, Captain. Don't like to point on that dagger at all. This may be all foolish precaution. And then again, it may not. I'll run the light over the doorway. No sign of button or spring, eh? No. You're awful close to him, Captain. Tex! Guy, grab hold of me, quick! What? I'm, I'm being drawn to... I can't pull back! Guys, guys, it's, it's dragging you right into it! Wait, hold my wrist! Put your arms around my neck! I got it! All right, guys, 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 gu
Unfortunately, storm makes it impossible for road crew to go out uh, unless Honorable Mr. Dargan would notice absence of Captain... Let's go back into that jungle and... Where's Silver? Uh, uh, why, uh, he, uh, he, he just stepped out for a while, Dargan. In a storm like this? Well, now I reckon that's his own business. Ain't no work today. By the way, uh, where were you last night when that jungle lion broke into camp? Uh, jungle lion? Yeah. Didn't you hear about it? Finally cornered it and killed it. Oh, oh we uh, heard the shouting all right, Dargan. Uh, heard the lion roar, too. Just figured the other fellas would take care of it. Well, for your information, there was no lion in camp last night. And neither were you or your pal. <laughs> You are alive? You look half drowned. I am. Sorry to have taken this long. Please inform us as to how you came back alive. Not now, Kai. We've still got work to do. Tonight. Tonight? You ain't aiming for us to go back there. Exactly. But Dargan was here in the barracks. Yes, with clever ruse. He discovered we were not in camp. Oh, so? I think he's known all along what we're up to. And if we go back here tonight... That'll be help, Tex. I'm certain he plans to visit the Temple of the Avenging God again. And we'll be right behind him. This time, we're going into the temple. Hold it now. There he goes, into the temple. Most unscientific to believe. Native costume makes it possible for Dagon to go past Dagger unarmed? And yet it's true, Kai. Seems to be. Almost did away with Captain Silver. And he was only taking a look at it. Dressed as we are this time, we'll get by the God of Vengeance, all right. Hate to have anybody back home see me in this here grass and get up. Uh, Captain, how much longer? Right now. Dargan is deep within the temple by now and won't notice us at the entrance. Let's go. possible. God that vengeance appears to be even more frightening tonight. Never hoped you were right as much as I do now, Captain. I'll go first. Then you, Kai, and Tex will follow. Right. You got a real nerve, Captain. Kai, look at him squeeze past with that dagger just reaching for his heart. And the captain is in sight. Well, your turn, Kai. Yes? Tex, now you? Ah, uh, me. Reckon's as good a way to go as any. Here I come. Oh. Uh, it's, it's, it's pulling, Captain. I'll give you a hand. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm a corner. Uh, 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 Tex, are you all right? You hurt in the fall? No. Be okay, Captain. Wasn't the fall that's got me. It was that dagger creeping up on me. Captain... I do not understand. Why did God of Vengeance choose only Tex? Later, Kai, later. Darwin is somewhere in this temple. We've got to find out what he's up to. Not this temple empty, except for a great altar up front. Yes, that's probably the place he'd pick for what I think he's doing. I'll keep to the walls. I'll get as close to the altar as we can. Up with your hands, Silver. Dargan! So you weren't inside the altar? No, I knew you'd look for me there. It's too easy a place to be trapped in. I waited for you, Silver. You were uh, expecting us? Sooner or later. <laughs> you sure looked the sight, Tex, when the God of Vengeance almost ran you through. <laughs> oh, I, you dirty chiseler. It'd take a feller like you to laugh at something like that. Keep your hands up in the air, Tex. Another move and I'll plug you. Tex, you've got a gun on you. Oh, now, why'd you have to tell him that, Captain? I told you not to bring one along. Well, I I knew something like this might happen. And it did, Tex. Throw that gun this way, fast. Do what you say. All right. Now, who sent you? Carlo Luis. Just what I thought. And he asked you to find the radio I used to keep in touch with the men who hired me. Huh? You were hired by the government, Dargan, and no one else. <laughs> no law against taking two salaries, Silver. I collect from the government and from the men who don't want the road built. Your racket is over, Dargan. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, Tex, but you're not leaving here alive. 
That radio hidden in the altar is too valuable to me. Now, each of you is going to put on a string of these beads. Man, have you gone loco? Most unusual beads, Captain. Very large and made of iron. Uh, ah! Beginning to understand mystery of God of vengeance. Bright boys, aren't you? Well, it'll do you no good. In the morning, the natives will find all three of you dead. Victims of the God of vengeance. <laughs> Lead the parade, Silver. I don't get it. Captain, what... Move, Silver. front of our hand car this time, eh, Dargan? Yeah. <laughs> no, not with Dargan himself here tied up like little boy. <laughs> <laughs> I still can't figure out what in tarnation made that god of vengeance tick. Well, it's quite simple, Tex. He's made of iron, and he's been standing around in electric storms for so many years that he's gathered a terrific charge of magnetism. Magnetism? Ordinary, but very powerful magnetic charge. Oh, you just pulling my leg, you two. Now, how can magnetism attract an ordinary human being? Not the person, but the metal objects on and in his clothing. Like the flashlight I held in my hand. Well, I And that gun you had hidden in your grass skirt. So that's what did it. A magnetized statue. My perplexity concerns other matter, Captain. Arrival of natives most unexpected. When Dargan wanted us to walk past the dagger with those iron beads on, I called my friends Kaniba and Mongana. More sudden friendship, Captain. No, that's what kept me so late that night. After I learned the secret of the idol, I went to see the natives and told them about Dargan. They want the railroad. And so they stood by, ready to help. Captain, what are we going to do with Dargan? Send him over to the authorities in Bolivar. For a nice, long stretch in Kabul. Yes, and by the time he gets out, he'll be able to take a pleasant ride on the railroad he wanted to destroy. <laughs> Seahound go for its next adventure. To what far-off part of the world does Captain Silver take his crew on the Seahound? You'll know if you listen in Monday at this same time over this same ABC station for an exciting new adventure with Captain Silver on the Seahound. Friday to your ABC station from 5.30 to 6. Make this the most exciting half hour of your day. Tomorrow, a thrilling story with Sky King called Wanted, Dead or Alive. And Monday, another adventure on the Sea Hound. Yes, make 5.30 to 6 the most exciting part of your day. The Sea Hound is a copyrighted feature. In today's program, Captain Silver was played by Barry Thompson. Today's script was written by Abram S. Guinness, and the program was directed by Charles S. Powers. This is Doug Browning speaking. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.